I'm just going to go through one more example. This is problem number 50. Um, I did also assign you one completing the square problem, 53 I believe, but I'm going to let you go for that one and see what you can do with it. I chose an easy one. Um, might be good if you did a harder one too, just pick one. Anyway, I'm not going to make you, but extra credit. Okay, so problem number 50, I should have written it down first because that's when it gets all wiggly when I'm trying to copy stuff down. Okay, x plus 4 squared minus 9, y minus 3 squared equals 9. Okay, again, so this one isn't in standard form yet. Problems I assigned to you are, so you won't have to do this step, but it's still a good thing to learn. To divide everything by 9, so then we will have x plus 4 squared over 9 minus y minus 3 squared over, oh, 9 over 9 is 1. That's okay. And then we'll have a 1 over here. Okay, let's go through and find all the same things we just found in our last problem. So the center, ooh, center is different. The number with the x value is the x, and the number with the y value is the y. So if these have traded places, like the, the y is here and the x is here, still make sure you're putting your point in the right order so that the x value is from the x and the y value is from the y. Okay, in this case we don't have to worry about that, so this will be a negative 4, positive 3. Now before we find all the other details, I really think we ought to do a graph first because these can be kind of tricky when the center is at a different location. Okay, so we're going to go to the left 4 and up 3 and put a point. Okay, now let's look at our first term and square that number. So square root of 9 is 3. That's our a value. So from the center, and of course our transverse axis would be to the left and right. No longer at the x-axis, it'll be up here. Instead, at x equals I mean y equals 3, correct, since it's been moved up 3, but it still is going horizontally just like the x-axis. Okay, so at this point we're going to go to the left and right 3, so there will be a point here, so 3 to that one, and then a point here. So let's list where those vertices are located. The vertices are at negative 1, 3, and negative 7, 3, correct? So if the center is at negative 4, 3, notice how they all have the number 3 in common? That's because our transverse axis is at y equals 3, so they all are going to have that value. Okay. Next, I believe we found the foci. So, foci, we have to go see is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So, a squared is 9 and b squared is 1, so we have 9 plus 1 is the square root of 10, which is 3 point something, just barely over 3, and we can't simplify that square root at all. So our foci then will be located now here's the tricky thing. You take the center point, the y value is going to stay the same, but the x value is going to be where the foci start at. So it's going to start at the point negative 4, and then it will be either to the right square root of 10, and then it's still at y equals 3, or it will be to the left of that point square root of 10, and then y value 3. So notice how I stayed with the center, and then I just took my c value and added and subtracted that from the center, and then the y value transverse axis stays exactly the same. So there's our foci. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the graphing part of this. So the I'm going to go up and down one, Then, if you want you can draw in your little box and connect those with diagonals. And then since the x value is positive, y value negative, we're going to go this direction. And last detail is to find the asymptotes. Eek. Scratch that. Um, if you want an adventure, go ahead and find the asymptotes, because notice that they're going to be at a different 
x intercept. That's the y intercept, a different y intercept. So to find them, you could do y equals mx plus b. And m in this case is going to be um, 1 over 3 because it's b over a going that direction, right? And m equals negative 1 over 3, so that's x. But then you have to find the y intercepts for those. So if you want to go to the effort of doing that, could be good, but you don't have to. So if you want to skip doing the asymptotes other than drawing them, I'm fine with that. Ignore the, ignore the, oh, I just realized I was just finding m, and so my equations are wrong. They should have y at the beginning of them. Anyway, so m is b over a, so that was 1 over 3, that's where I got that little thing, right? Okay. So like I said, draw on the asymptotes. You don't have actually have to find the equations because that starts getting really time consuming. Okay. I think we're good.